Dang. It's been a minute, huh? Anywho, it's your boy, Mind Over Matter, reporting, same vibes, new couch. Cue the intro. You've got mail. All right. So let me know what you think about the new intro. And I'm just going to be experimenting back and forth with a couple of different things that I've just been trying to do on the road to 500. So we're really halfway there towards our goal for the year. So that's kind of crazy, especially looking at where we started off versus where we are right now. With that out of the way, I also wanted to move on to the more serious subject at hand. The one that I wanted to devote a majority of this video into talking about. It's actually two main things, but I actually want to just break it down um, into the first one, and then we'll go into the second one. It have really been like on my mind, and, like I just really haven't had the time to really sit down and talk about it. But without further ado, I just really want to get on the topic of how much our country has transformed in the last four months or so. Um, we've literally gone from being, I guess, a copacetic agreement, like unheard, like just like everything going on, life is regular, to just everything being crazy. Trevon Johnson, Klaus Reese, Clifford Glover, Amando Diallo, Randy Evans, Yvonne Smallwood, Oscar Grant, Sean Bell, Trayvon Martin, Jordan Davis, Jonathan Farrell, Eric Garner, Ayanna Jones, John Crawford, Tamir Rice, Freddie Gray, Mike Brown, The Charleston Nine, Walter Scott, Sandra Bland, Corey Jones, Alton Sterling, Keith Scoy, Jordan Edwards, Laquan McDonald, Dion Johnson, Tony McDade, Stephon Clark, Natasha McKenna, Terrence Crutcher, Medgar Evers, Botham John, Tatiana Jefferson, Michael Noel, Kevin Matthews, Betty Jones, Michael Lee, India Kager, Nuwana LaRoche, Ahmaud Arbery, Rihanna Taylor, and George Floyd. I'm sure you've heard of some of these names before, and I'm not going to go into too many details about the stories, if not, I can on a different video, and if you want that, then leave a comment down below, and I can definitely go over the different topics. We can do this debate, like, I love talking about politics, I love talking about um, civil debates, about human rights, like, that's my jam. Um, if you know me personally and what I've done in my history and my upbringing, the things that I've had to do and get through in order to be where I am today, then you know that like it's not a thing for me to ever bring up. But um, that's not what today's video is about. Today's video is about the state of our country and how I believe that COVID has been a somewhat blind blessing in order for us to see the state of where things are at right now. and just see where we could be. Y'all know me as Mount of Matter, but I'm so much more than that. I'm a black man in America. I started locking my hair. I have um, gone to college, graduated. I did high school. I did the whole damn thing. But at this is the end of the day, you don't really know that about me. At the end of the day, 
sometimes people just see a black guy hair messy or lot depending on if you're woke or not gold chain with a somewhat questionable sense of fashion and some people might see me as a threatening black man with bad intentions that's disgusting that has to stop I'm tired of seeing on the news young black men and women going missing, being killed, being prosecuted on an entirely discriminatory basis just by the color of our skin. In this country, we face a lot of injustices and just abuse at the hand of the people who are supposed to be protecting us. I know people who hide, who hide when they hear sirens or when they see cop cars roll around, you know? They change their entire mood, their demeanor, their posture just because the cop car rolled by. Five O's near, you know? And it shouldn't be like that. In a perfect world, black men and women shouldn't have to fear for the lives of the people who are supposed to be protecting them. We shouldn't have to be, you know, changing who we are in order to fit the role and narratives for people who, who think that just because we're different based on the way that we look that somehow we are of a threatening or or savage persona, which we're not. We're the same as you. Our blood is the same, you know? It doesn't matter who I am. I still get the red card, red cross, you know, cards asking me for my blood because all life is precious. But sometimes people don't see it that way. And we need to come together and change that. That's a lot of what I want the tribe to be. I want the tribe to be a zone where there's literally no sort of discriminatory basis. Everybody's free to do and be as they please. Like, I grew up in a very rigid Christian household. And so I know what it feels like to be on one end of the spectrum. And I went to school in white neighborhoods. And so I know what it's like on the other side of the spectrum to have privilege, to have this ignorance of not knowing what the other side lives like. I've been through different walks of life, and so I know from different vantage points what one situation could possibly look like. And I think that there has been so many strides made in the right direction for the wrong, and for the right reasons, but in the wrong direction. Um, a lot of things have been given to the black and brown community as sort of like token, you know, victories. and. We don't need those. I'm here to say, me personally, I don't want those. You know, I could give a fuck who is on my syrup. I could care less what you call the bedroom that has the biggest bed. I don't really give a damn. What I care about is that we catch and apprehend and possibly prosecute the killers of Breonna Taylor. What I care about is that people who are enlisted into our military to protect and serve are taken care of and guarded and protected. What I care about is trans lives being able to be valued and seen as the same level of importance as any other lives. People shouldn't have to be walking in groups or have their location on 24-7 in order to feel safe. I shouldn't have to tell my sister that she needs to check in with me every single hour on the hour and make sure that she's rolling with one of her friends but she's doing what she needs to do because I'm afraid for her life. I shouldn't have to be reposting every single week a new female who's gone missing. It's all problems that stem from a bigger issue and I have so many things to say on it, so many things I won't even get into right now but the main point of this video, the main reason that I wanted to make this video is because we need to value black lives, black female lives, black trans lives. If it's black, it's beautiful. You better believe that. And that's not up for debate. We can't talk about that. That's a fact. Okay? If you fuck with me and what I do, then you should agree with me on some level, you know? I'm not saying you have to, but that's just where I stand. I know that was super deep and heavy, but I want to move into the last topic. So, 
we're just gonna transition like that. Food for thought, y'all. Everything that I talk about is just food for thought. So this is gonna be the last part of our three piece special. You know, you got the three piece for the side, the biscuit and the grape soda, but you know, whatever. We're gonna be talking about voting. Registering to vote. Um, voting has never really been a priority for me, which is crazy to talk, especially if you know who I am personally, but it's, it's just not been a priority for me in years prior. But now, I would say now is the most important time to express your whole, you know, civic duty as an American citizen. Um, and even for those who are aspiring to be citizens, like, I think that voting is so important now more than ever. Because we're at an impasse and a crossroads where we are faced with, again, not two of the best choices that we could have had. Um, but at the same time, you know, you just gotta pick your poison. And I think that we can't have four more years of just the same old things. The definition of, of insanity is doing the same thing, but expecting different results. That's insanity. And I don't want that. And I know that you don't want that. I hope that you don't want that. I can't speak for everybody out there. But if you wanna make change, then you have to do something. If you have the mentality or the mindset that because you're one person, or just some individual that you can't be a part of or spur change within your country, town, city, or wherever have you, then you're wrong. Um, you really need to change your outlook and really just start to think about the impact that you have on a daily basis. Every action that you do has a reverberation back into the world, into the universe. I don't mean to get too deep on you, but register to vote. This year is super important. In the upcoming 2020 election, both the primaries and the uh, final presidential election, they're gonna be extremely important in how we move forward in the next four years. If you're concerned about anything like climate change, civil and cultural changes and things like that, even when it comes to you know taxes and how things are gonna be affected moving forward, um, should things return back to normal, if things return back to normal with Corona and COVID, then you need to vote. Voting is important. It's gonna be the only conduit that we have, you know, without otherwise having, you know, other outlets to spur change. If you're somebody who's been stuck inside of your house for the past three months, four months, and you haven't left because of COVID, if you're not an essential worker, if you're somebody who's literally just, you know, been inside watching TikToks and doing what you need to do, then like, make change. Find time to make change. There's so many different ways. I'm gonna post stuff down below on how you can register wherever you're from in order to just be a part of this historically and important democratic, you know, process. But as always, peace, positivity, and prosperity. Facade, and I'm going over time, no breaks. You know that I'm going hard. I do whatever that it takes. You know, if you were mine, I wouldn't let you go to wait. You know, keep that tupper when I'm dead. You know, I know sweat. Everybody coming in, you know that I'm getting blessed.